Hi everybody, my name is Spamos and welcome to Stormworks! Coming up today, there's a ship, a specific ship, I want to check it out, I want to bring you with me, have a look together, and so, without any more stalling, let's begin! Welcome to the game and welcome on board the RMS Baltus, available on the Steam Workshop. If you like what you see, there's a link in the video description down below, but if you do pick it up, make sure to leave a message as Spamos sent you. Heavily inspired by the likes of the Arabic, the Adriatic, and other of the earlier White Star liners, she looks lovely, looks very exciting, but she is a big girl. If you want to spawn her in, be careful, you've got to come out to the large oil rig, otherwise you're going to have a bad time. Don't think I'm picking favourites here, but why is it we see a lot, and I mean a lot, of White Star Line inspired ships, whilst we don't really see too many Cunard Line inspired ships beyond the obvious of the Lusitania, Queen Mary, stuff like that. White Star just make fantastic looking ships and I think that that lives on to this day for the likes of Stormworks because people just want to recreate these floating beauties and look at the stern of this girl very classical shaping there of the under scoop of the pooper duper but also I don't know it seems a little low to the waterline but then again she's not the biggest of girls for a big girl she's a big girl but we're not talking titanic big but she's still got a bit of bigness to the thickness but as they say the proof is in the pudding what's she gonna be like when we hit the ocean Open ocean. Let's find out. Let's go aboard, get the engine started, and take her to sea. Down in the boiler room, the boilers are turned on and they're brewing up some steam. And with the steam coming in, I should be able to throw this valve down. Oh, look at this! The pistons are moving, everybody! Let's get both port and starboard engines running, please. Look at that, everybody. Isn't that just mesmerizing? I I'm pretty sure it's just cosmetic. I don't think they actually are turning or propelling the ship in any way, but I like detailing like this. Apparently, this is made by the same dude who made the Olympus, and on the Olympus, this could also happen, but I was in such a rush to not sink, I didn't notice. But look at it! This might be a reason why it's so laggy. Who knows? But I don't care, it looks amazing. That just leaves to start up the engines. But how about that, everybody? With the engines up and running, the propellers are spinning, and we are slowly departing the large oil rig. Wow. For today's episode, Bridge Wing Review. Bridge Wing Review. That's 10 out of 10, everybody. That doesn't get any better than that. That looks freaking beautiful. Love me a good bridge wing. Looking backwards down the port side of the ship, we're looking good from this direction, too. <laughs> Taking it at full speed, everybody. Both poor and starboard telegraphs up to maximum. Look at her go, cutting through the water like a hot knife through butter. Not a problem at all. Majestically, gracefully, swan-like. Oh, she's like a, a duck on a frozen pond, sliding everywhere in a good way. And this time there doesn't happen to be a nuclear power plant dead ahead of us. If you don't know what I'm talking about, check out our Olympus video. Anyway, I got really good vibes about this ship. I got real good feelings about this. Now we're out and we're actually going somewhere. I'm going to take you for a tour inside. We're going to see the officers' quarters, the first class accommodation, engineering, a bit of everything. You're going to have a good time. So make sure you stick around to the very end because I got a good feeling about this one. It might not sink. Wouldn't that be a turn for the books, eh? Place your bets now. Is it gonna sink? Don't you be skipping to the end. I know if you skip to the end, there's a specific analytic that tells me if you're skipping to the end. So on the Boltus, the bridge, the wheelhouse, the whole officer's quarters, it is separated from the first class passenger public spaces. So we're gonna start our tour checking out this area right here. The wheelhouse, it has one. This is where you can sell the ship from from your regular day to day. Not a lot happening in here, but on the back wall, you got master controls for all of the ship's lights. But stepping out of the wheelhouse, you got the other helm, and to be honest, I would much rather be sailing from here. This has got a much nicer view. I can see where I'm going. It's amazing. Directly underneath all of that business, you got the chart room. Here on this side, you got a massive TV. I wonder if we can get Nintendo on there. That'd be cool. And on the opposite side, we've got the radio room. Got bunk beds, a whole lot of buttons you can press, great windows, way too much space for what they require. They got some good digs right here. Seriously, they got a forward facing window. This is amazing. Now, it's a bit of a faff that gets around. You would think having this kind of segregated access like this, like you could navigate from the top to the bottom of this whole office's quarters without having to go outside. You can't. Now, it's a bit of a skinny fit, but this is the officer's lounge. A little private place they can come put their feet up when they're off shift. And just after that, we've got some officer bedrooms. However, moving forwards towards the bar, we can step down some steps and find 
ourselves in the forward cargo bay that's absolutely full of detailing. Look at this. Why is the ship so laggy? Well, this is probably the culprit right here. The detailing is over the top. Don't get me wrong. I appreciate it. I absolutely love how specifically detailed they can get inside this build. But does it come with the cost of lag? Yes, it does. And it's the price you have to pay. So it's kind of a fine balance between performance and detailing. I feel like this creator has gone way overboard on the detailing. Because face it, wouldn't you rather have more people enjoy your creation rather than a smaller people enjoying a more detailed creation i i don't know for me i'd rather get more people in on this having fun enjoying your work i find that kind of scary to be honest i don't like the idea of kind of being behind the anchor looking out to the open ocean i feel like at any second it might splash in and get me wet I can see a lighthouse on this side. Opening up a doorway on the starboard side, we head into the mail room. Now, heading off beyond the mail room, we find ourselves in the crew berthing areas. But I don't want to break the immersion or anything. But if you go through the wall, there is no berthing. And if you go down, there's a whole lot of stuff. Now, heading further off, we enter the third class area, including the third class dining saloon. I like what they did with the seats. Walking down the corridors, we head even further off in search of content. But what content will wait for us? Only time will tell. Ascending the stairs from D deck up to C deck, we find ourselves on the stern. Heading even further up, we find our way onto the boat deck, and one hell of a view greets you. Whoa, look at that, everybody. Being first class ain't so bad, is it? First class ain't got a view like this. No, they don't. So now, making our way forward, we find ourselves at the third class smoking room. Stepping inside, it's actually pretty nice. Got a pretty good general amount of space. Lovely windows all the way around. A bit of pot of plant action. But third class, very, very, very good for them. Saying goodbye to the smoking room, heading more forwards we find ourselves entering more first class affairs oh tell you in first class of wall paneling like that finding a staircase gone down to sea deck and i found myself the plunge baths stepping inside we've got a shower unit area lovely floor tiles that are so recognizable how about that everybody but heading off we've got the main pool area itself and i have to say this looks very, very luxurious. While the pool itself is a no frills bad experience, it does have a clock on the wall so you can keep an eye on the time as it goes by. But then heading aft and down a flight of stairs connected, we find ourselves in the Turkish baths. Look at the detailing. This is Stormworks. I mean, there's so much effort gone into kind of paneling everything. It looks amazing, but I can't help but wonder it's increasing the lag. Returning to B-Tech and continuing forwards, we find ourselves at the foot of the Grand Staircase. It really is a luxurious affair, with that dome and the funnels visible, that blue sky beaming in, illuminating the first class areas. It's hard to think that anything terrible could ever happen on something so lovely. I mean, look at that. It's even got a chandelier swinging around with that smokestack smoking away like it is. So stepping up onto the A deck and heading aft, we find ourselves in a lovely palm calf. Isn't that a beauty, everybody? So light, so airy and spacious. Plenty of places to sit down. Turning around and heading forwards past the staircase, we enter what I assume to be a first class lounge. Now, it's not exactly a room with a view because the bridge and the whole officer's quarters obstructs everything. You see the sky at least, that's something. But of course, the promenade. How can we not have a look at the promenade? It is absolutely beautiful. If you haven't been on a cruise, I highly recommend it because of view like this. And so you see it with your own eyes. It is the most pure thing in nature you will ever see. There's literally no contaminants, no smog, no fog, no anything get in between you and just raw nature. Speaking about things getting in the way of me and raw nature, there's a bridge coming up! For reals, this is how laggy it is for me. I'm speeding it up for you guys, but for me, I'm in a hurry to get to the bridge, but this is literally not doctored in any way. This is how moon physics -y laggy it is for me. That looks, is that Komodo terminal over there? Oh, fantastic. This is his fault, isn't it? Right, I'm on the helm. I'm turning this to starboard to get us out of this pickle Komodo's got us into. Has to have himself a railway track across the ocean. Where do boats go? On the ocean. With the helm thrown hard over, I am trying my best to turn this girl around to avoid this collision with this pathetic, stupid railway bridge in the middle of the ocean where boats live, not trains. It's going to be a close miss by the looks of things. Bit too close for my likings, though. It's not enough. We've got a collision about to happen here. Oh, 
We've come to a shuddering stop. Once again, we find ourselves in a sticky situation. <laughs> Right, what to do about this? We nearly, nearly lost our crow's nest. A list is happening to starboard. We should do something about that. We're rolling back the engines now. Whoa, 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 whoa. What the hell just happened? I appear to be missing a lifeboat. Has anybody seen a lifeboat? Right, I'm opening the cargo hatches. I want to get a bird's eye view of what's happening down there. Well, I don't know. Things are pretty dry down there just now. Maybe, maybe it's all in my head. Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, no. I didn't think this one through. Oh, how stupid. I'm stuck. Come on, my dude. My dude. Please, my dude. My angry Frenchman. My dude. Um, it's your boy, angry Frenchman. Yes! Oh, what a mad lad. What a guy. He's amazing. You know him as the angry Frenchman, but he is here all week. Well, I found the lifeboat, everybody. I thought it was a little iceberg at first, but no. It fell overboard, turned turtle, and there she is. Well, I suppose this is a good thing, to be honest. There's no more guessing if we are sinking or not, because we now know that we are sinking. It's confirmed. Yeah, see, look, the bow's gone so far down, the water's now flooding in for the hawsiers for the anchors. That's not good. See, look, the cargo hold's already underwater. I always find that really creepy, seeing windows go underwater, because it's like that shouldn't be happening. Water is now cascading onto the forecastle, and it has started to wash its way up the deck. As the bow goes down, the stern is beginning to rise. I'm not even bothered. I should be panicking right now, but I'm not, because frankly, every single ship I touch sinks, but I somehow survive every single time, so I've got a pretty good feeling that I should be just fine this time. Um, I would like to see some more of the ship, though, before it's too late. Something very pretty about sinking ships. For me, I think, actually, it's always just that fascination and that fixation that this thing built for humans to be on is slipping into an area when humans are not meant to be. And, like, it's just, like, something that doesn't belong. It's alien where it's going. The propellers are now climbing out of the water. Oh god, the water's coming up the promenade deck. That's always a horrifying sight to see. Oh, the first class dining saloon. We didn't get to come in here. Well, now we did, and here we are. Well, the swimming pool's having a bit of a bad time. The water seems to have rolled out at some point, leaving just a puddle remaining. I wouldn't worry. I got a good feeling it's gonna fill back up any time now. As time goes on, the water climbs ever higher towards the wheelhouse. First class dining saloon is now taking on water. It's fabulous furniture becoming waterlogged and cloggy. Suddenly, the ship seems to be dropping rather fast by the bow. The water has accelerated its way towards the wheelhouse. I don't know what's brought this on. The dining saloon has been overcome very quickly now and nearly entirely filled with seawater. Imagine being stood here, seeing this as it happened. Your back's against the wall. You can't go anywhere else. Just water coming to get you. Oh, scary. Things at the stern are not looking any better. Things are getting a bit slanty. And for good reason, things are really accelerating now. Most of the forward sections of the midships are completely underwater. Promenade deck not looking so good right now. First class corridors are absolutely filling to the brim with water. There is no escape at this point. Turkish bath still looking pretty good. If you didn't know you were sinking, you probably wouldn't really be aware. Apart from the angle changing, but maybe you'd think it's just a bit of a wave. A really long, consistent wave. <laughs> <laughs> the grand staircase has already flooded. The water is almost at the dome at the top of that forward funnel just hanging in there. It'd be so cool if it would fall over, but it probably won't. Suddenly, there's a massive crack and a bang, and the ship splits in half. Whoa, there it goes, everybody crashing down, separating water everywhere. What an absolute horrible sight, but I can't help but watch it. Now, the question is, are we going to float and be okay? Or are we not okay and should do something about this? I think we're going to be okay. Things are looking pretty good. Missing half a ship? We can work on it. That's a sight no one should ever have to see on board a ship. I'm stood on the ship, but I'm looking down at the ship underwater. That's my ship down there. While the stern section looked like it was about to come to a nice calm rest, the water is now flooding down the third class corridor. I think we're about to see an acceleration in sink rates. It's not all bad news, Bears, if you're inside the ship. There is a lifeboat at the end of the tunnel. Sadly, it looks like it's lights out for the RMS Boltus. The water is lapping at the boat deck level. It is only a matter of time before the grip of the ocean overwhelms her and pulls her down. Look at that cross section, everybody. It really is kind of creepy weird. Corridors, a whole public room there. Like, 
This is not a way a ship should be seen. This is it. This is the final moment. Maybe I can get to a lifeboat. Maybe I can throw it up on eBay. Make some money back on this massive loss. Hold on. There's still time. There is still time. Don't you dare pull me down with you. Ah! Thankfully, I made my way to a lifeboat with front row seats to the end of the best movie that was never written. Will you make your mind up? What do you want to do? Do you want to sink or do you want to just float there like a dum-dum who can't decide if they're boat or if they're not? Look at you. You go down, you come up again. You go down a bit more, you come back up again. Well, whatever you want to do, take your sweet time because I don't care anymore. That is going to be an episode there because she's being a fussy girl refusing to go down in a timely manner. Did you enjoy yourself? I hope you did. If you did, you can leave me a comment down below of your thoughts and opinions. I'd be very appreciative. And if you want to support the channel, pick up a t-shirt today. CD17 online.co.dk. It's amazing. And so are you if you wear a shirt. While you're at it, follow me on Twitter. Tell me your thoughts and opinions about this episode. And on that bombshell, thank you for watching. Rate, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye, everybody.